What's going on guys? My name is Jake and you are watching Meat Source. Today I'm back with a video about smartwatches. The idea of smartwatches has always kind of been the same. It's about having the same functionality that your phone can have without necessarily needing to pull the phone out of your pocket. Now I've actually had three smartwatches in my time. The first one was actually beginning with the Sony Smartwatch 2. And I had that thing all the way back in around 2013, late 2013 sometime. Now this was one of the first smartwatches to be compatible with Android. And it was able to push notifications to your wrist and tell you when you're getting a phone call and everything like that. What was that watch's downfalls? One, the screen. Couldn't read it during the daylight whatsoever. I mean, you could, but barely. Like it was, think old school displays. Think about your oldest phones and how hard they were to read in the, in the sunlight back in the day. Number two was its battery life. You could maybe get one day of performance out of that watch, but even then you were kind of pushing it. Around a year or so later, 2014, 2015, I got myself the LG G Watch R. And that was the first watch to really show me what a smartwatch should be. It was the first smartwatch I had to feature Android Wear, which was a really big improvement, as well as an actual circular OLED display. Now this watch only still lasted around about a day and a half, but this time you could have the screen always on and you could read it in the sunlight, which is a massive plus, especially for reading the time. But it was one day regardless. See, that's where most smartwatches fall. It's in the battery life. Well, you might be thinking, well, Jake, you just said that these batteries lasted more than a day. Yeah, they did last more than a day, a day and a half. But what's the point in wearing your watch overnight if it's only gonna last at most half the day the following day? You gotta charge every single night. And that is where this watch comes in. This is the Galaxy Watch S4 or Series 4, 46 millimeters, and this is the LTE enabled version. It boasts an up to seven day battery life with all the bells and whistles you could possibly ask for. As for the battery life and this being an LTE model, I'll get further into that later down the track. So what makes this watch, this one right here, so great? What makes it worth your time? One of the things that make this watch so great is one of the things that also held it back at the start, still kind of holds it back now, but not so much. That's the operating system. It's Tizen OS, which is Samsung's propri proprietary, proprietary version of their own Wear OS for their own devices. That means it doesn't run Google's own Wear OS, which is a huge ecosystem of apps and everything like that. The Samsung watch is restricted to its own ecosystem of apps, which again, was a bigger problem than it is now. So why is this a great feature? Well, for the same reason why Apple devices generally have really good battery life considering the size of their batteries and everything like that in general, it's the same reason what makes this watch great. Tizen OS is optimized exactly for Samsung's own equipment. So they can control every last little aspect of it, which makes things like battery optimization really, really good. And that same ecosystem that I was talking about earlier, there are issues that don't really exist anymore, but still haunt the watch to this day. And if you just do a quick Google search of issues, common issues that people have with the watch, you'll see the top results still show that those res uh, issues still persist where they don't actually. So where back in the day, you would receive a Facebook notification or a WhatsApp notification, and you couldn't actually reply to those those messages. You'd have to, like you'd see the, the message, but you'd have to use your phone to reply it. Whereas now you can on the watch, so you can use voice to text or you can text directly, uh, type directly on the watch face. Now with that being said, something that's missing on the Samsung watches is those key Google apps that will never arrive on these Google uh, Samsung watches. These apps are most notably the Google Assistant and Google Maps. Now Google Maps isn't a huge deal, but it is still missed. When you're using a Wear OS device, i.e. my LG watch, you can basically get your turn-by-turn -turn directions the exact same way that you'd get on your phone. You wouldn't necessarily use that all the time, so it's not a huge deal, but 
things like maybe you're walking through a city that you haven't been through before and you don't need to have your phone glued to your face all the time. It's kind of handy just having your watch and you can look at it, it'll vibrate to say you've got a turn coming up soon. You can look at it, see the exact road that you're going to be turning down and turn down it, blah, blah, blah. Or same for taking uh, directions with public transport and everything like that. It was just something that you don't necessarily need, but it was handy. And some people will argue against that, but I personally would have used and used to use a feature like that. However, Samsung has included an app called Here We Go. They didn't actually make that app. It's a third party company, but they've provided it for free on their watches at no additional charge. That's what for free means, I guess. Here We Go works well for the most part. It seems to run on like an open source map that you guys may or may not be familiar with that basically, they, they're good. They, they've got everything in terms of the newest upgrades to roads and everything like that. The part where it fails, where Google Maps will just always excel, and I don't think anyone, even Apple's gonna overtake them anytime soon, is being able to type in like a, a restaurant name or um, something like that, especially the ones that aren't as popular. Let's be real, how often has it been that you aren't able to find somewhere that you want to go on Google Maps? You can still find it on Here We Go, but it probably pays to know the exact address or at least the street that the place you're going to is on and you can still find you navigate your way that way. So I personally don't think I'm going to be using Here We Go a lot unless I basically absolutely need it. That's probably one big downfall for the Samsung watches. And finally, the main buzzkill for this watch. It's the lack of Google Assistant. Instead, we got Bixby, which is basically Google Assistant's inbred cousin. And that's putting it nicely. Bixby rarely understands every single word that I say. And not only that, when she's replying to me, she sounds like the same kind of AI voices you used to from 10 years ago. The I am a robot. Wickham will see a lot of sun on Monday. Whereas Google Assistant, she just sounds so much more natural and it's just so much more pleasing to hear. And honestly, this is the watch's biggest and greatest downfall. It's it's 100%, it's not necessary at all, but it's these things that we've, a lot of us have become accustomed to with using the Google Assistant. You can't, it's really hard to make uh, set alarms or, uh, well she's okay at setting alarms, but setting reminders because she doesn't always understand every word you say, that could be a lot to do with my Australian accent, I don't know. Hi Bixby, set a reminder in two hours to change my pants because they have poo in them. Are you ready to save the reminder change my pants because they have pool in them due on September 23rd? Um, not that I have the dirty Australian accent, but at the same time, I don't know, maybe she's more tuned to American accents. But that is about enough for the negatives. Let's get into something a little bit more awesome about this watch and why I still chose it regardless of knowing these issues. Like a few other watches, you can opt in to pay an extra 100 Australian dollars, in my case, for an LTE enabled version of the watch. Or you can just go for the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi only edition. With this watch, you really can basically leave your phone behind in almost any situation, especially with the LTE edition. I'll go into that more again later. It has a built-in eSIM, so setup is really, really easy. You basically boot it up, connect it to your phone, go through some, what do you call them, like cards the, to set the, the watch up with the phone, pair them together. Then on your phone, a little pop-up will come up from your carrier, I'm with Telstra, and it asks you if you want to upgrade your plan. And as long as you're on a month-to-month -month plan, like with Telstra, I'm in a non-locking contract, but I'm on like a, I just pay $60 a month. I have the option to just add an extra $5 a month, which is like 17 cents a day to enable my phone and my watch to work without being connected to each other. They both typically both have the same phone number. So whether or not I'm connected to my phone, I'll get phone calls and messages and all that. And if you have the LTE model, LTE model and you choose to skip that step, it'll just behave like the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi model only. But unless you bought it secondhand or something, honestly, the 17 cents a day seems like a pretty decent enough deal, in my eyes at least. And like I said, that's where this watch shines. I can receive phone calls, I can receive texts, I get my app notifications, I can make payments, I can track my fitness and my sleep, all on one watch that sits on my wrist. It's, 
it's pretty cool. Now, all these features wouldn't really mean a whole lot, in my opinion, without some good battery performance. And this watch right here, in my experience, has lasted a good three days continuous usage. That's sleeping, running, uh, walking, receiving notifications, phone calls, everything. Three days non-stop. And now it can actually go into like the four day range, but again, like the other watches, you'd be better off charging it on the third night, so that way you're not gonna run into a half day battery usage situation the following day. Now, with that being said, you can actually get around about seven days usage out of this watch, just like Samsung advertises. Around the seven day-ish mark, maybe less, probably not more. But the thing is with that, is you gotta put it into like a battery optimized mode or a battery saving mode, which is cool, but you generally wouldn't wanna use that Overall, you lose all of your Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, LTE connectivity, all of that. It basically takes all the smart out of the smartwatch. Your screen goes grayscale. Now, that's a, that's a really, really good feature to have. Don't get me wrong, especially if you are running towards the end of the day, you may have forgotten to charge it, you've got like 10% left. Hit that battery saver mode and that will last you right through to the end of the day till you can charge that sucker back up. But yeah, if you want to have a smartwatch that's actually smart, three to four days, charge it on the third night. That's my opinion. So on top of all your notifications and everything like that, it achieves this battery life basically by turning the screen off whenever you're not looking at it. Which is fine in my opinion, because why else would you need the screen to be on? So the watch turns on automatically by uh, raising it from your waist or wherever you have to your face. It'll turn the watch on most of the time. Sometimes it doesn't recognize it. Sometimes it doesn't recognize it, let's say if your hands at like if you're on a computer and you're only just bringing it up to your, your, your face level, you, like a fast one it'll do it, but if you just slow watch, like it won't activate. But almost every time from waist to face, it will activate. So, and if it doesn't activate, just tap the screen or tap one of the buttons, rotate the bezel, it'll turn on. <laughs> Especially with the display technology that we have these days, OLED screens suffer from burn-in, and that's when you've, you, you've probably seen it on a phone that you've had for more than a couple of years that has an OLED display, like an iPhone or a Samsung. You can see like the burn-in of certain things that stay on the screen, whether it be navigation buttons or a status bar, they burn into the screen. The same thing's gonna happen with your watch, so I'm actually a big fan of not having an always-on display, especially with something like a watch, because you don't need it unless you're looking at it. And, like I said, it gives you wicked battery life, so something that's definitely worth keeping at the default setting, in my opinion. Speaking of displays, you may have heard of the Apple Watch Series 5, which was only just announced. You know, I'm sure you know what an Apple Watch is, but the Series 5 was the latest one that was just released at the same time as the iPhone 11 and everything like that. And one of the big killer features of this of this watch is that it's got an always, always, always on display. As in, it there's nothing that changes when you lower your wrist. Oh, and it does that with the same amount of battery life as the Series 4, which didn't do that. All it does is just dims the display when you lower your hand, but it goes back to full brightness when you raise it. You'd be like... <laughs> Oh my god, they're so amazing, how do they do that? The thing is, it sounds like they're onto something pretty cool. This Series 4 watch only um, boasts about an 18 hour battery life and the 5 was supposed to do the same with the display. 9 to 5 Mac done a poll and asked a lot of the new Series 5 watch owners if they are achieving these wicked results that Apple had promised and no. No they're not, unfortunately. Uh, some people as low as like only 13 hours which is, in some people's cases, like mine, it's barely enough to cover a full work day, so... Do I have to say more? Do I? Now let's get into another feature that makes this watch wicked. It is equipped with Samsung Pay, which means you can make tap payments at basically anywhere that accepts them with your watch. Now, something to note with Samsung Pay is that it's only compatible with Pretty much all Android devices. It used to only be Samsung devices, but Samsung opened it up to all Android devices so people can have another brand of phone and still work with their watch. But it won't work with iOS, so maybe that might be a reason why you don't want a Samsung watch if you have a, an iPhone. To activate Samsung Pay, you just hold and press uh, the, the back button, I'm pretty sure it is. Yep, and then if you haven't used Samsung Pay in a little while, let's say a few hours, it'll ask you for a pin number that you set and then it'll activate and you can use that as a payment thing. If you're doing payments close within each other, you don't have to keep typing in that pin number, which is super handy. Now, in my experience using Samsung Pay on my watch, it basically worked 
nearly every single time. Maybe out of the 50 odd times that I've used it, it probably hasn't worked like three or four of them. So maybe carry your debit card or your credit card with you if you're going to shop at a place that you haven't been to before. Once you know that your watch is guaranteed to work at that terminal, don't worry about bringing a wallet. It's, it's, it's super handy. I mean, we all can do it with our phone, but without like having to pull anything out, just having your watch just to do a bang, paid. It's not necessary, but I can't really explain how much it just makes the life easier. It, and plus it looks cool as in my opinion. Last but not least, this watch has a 5 ATM dust and water resistance rating which is a fair bit higher than your phone's IPX7 rating or whatever it may or may not have. So basically a 5 ATM rating means that this watch can sink 50 meters below underwater for up to 10 minutes and you're basically gonna be fine. There shouldn't be any damage to occur to the watch. That being said, if you're diving down 50 meters, you should probably get an actual diver's watch. This watch isn't for you. But what that does mean for us normies out there that don't do stuff like that, basically you can be 100% worry free that if you go for a shower or if you go for a swim in the pool, it's really very unlikely that there's gonna be any water damage to your device. Catch a mouse. So having this kind of rating basically means the watch has to be completely sealed and has no openings, which means it charges wirelessly using like a dock that basically Samsung provides in the box. And this watch charges relatively quickly. I mean, it goes from zero to full in around about three hours, but in my usage, in the emergency situation, you can get pretty much a full day's charge out of just whacking it on there for 20 to 30 minutes. So, say you wake up in the morning, completely forgot to charge it overnight, you've got half an hour to get ready, chuck it on charge, go get ready, take it off charge, you should be right, hopefully. But most of the day, you'll be right. Although there's only this one particular charger that does work with um, with this watch, I have tried just the larger um, wireless charging pads. They don't seem to work. I think there needs to be a specifically smaller coil inside these chargers. I, I've done a bit of a search online and I'm actually gonna buy one eventually where I can charge my phone and my watch on the same dock wirelessly. It doesn't seem to need to be a Samsung specific one, which is good news, but it, does, it, it won't work with just any old charging mat, so maybe look for one that's compatible with Samsung watches or smart watches or something in general. Okay, let's sum it up. Do you want this watch here? Because let's face it, no one actually needs a smart watch. They're just kind of cool to have. But do you want this watch? Do you want to leave your phone behind with no worries at all? <laughs> do you want to be able to make payments uh, without necessarily needing your phone or wallet? Do you want to track your fitness and your health and your sleep? Do you want to receive all your notifications on your watch? Uh, if you happen to leave your phone behind, you're always kind of connected in your own little digital bubble. Do you want all this in a device that's strong, sturdy, charges quickly, has a four, three to four day battery life? Let me say no more. I honestly couldn't recommend this watch enough. Nothing else compares to it. Like the closest is probably the Apple Watch, but like I said, that's got its own problems. It's good for Apple people, but anyone else, honestly, I wouldn't consider anything else than this one. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. This one was released in late 2018. So Samsung's probably gonna release the Series 5 of this watch soon. And that watch is bound to be pretty pretty damn good, but at the same time, if you can get this watch for a good deal now or even then, I'd still probably go with this one because it's got every kind of feature that you'd want. Unless it's got some kind of amazing integration with Google with the same battery life, I'd stick with this one and 100% want a smartwatch, get this one. As for whether or not you should get the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi model or the one that also has 4G LTE compatibility, it's up to you. It's really what you think you're gonna need your watch for. Like, basically think of it this way. If you don't have your phone on you at the same time, you're gonna lose all your um, notifications. You're gonna lose anything basically wireless is what you're gonna lose. You can still use Samsung Pay on your watch once it's set up without an internet connection. Uh, you can still use offline maps and GPS tracking, but you won't be able to do just the cool things in terms of receiving phone calls, making phone calls, 
sending text messages, all that stuff. You will still need your phone. You're still tied to your phone. But $100 less and maybe $5 a month less that you're paying, maybe that's worth it to you. Honestly, I'd go with the LTE model though, if you can. I should probably mention for those of you who are wondering, you can actually swap out this ugly ass band that Samsung supplies. You can see just around about here, that's a quick release strap, so you can just pull that out and pull the straps out. And these watches are compatible with any 22 millimeter wrist straps that you can buy anywhere on any retailer, basically. I've got a, a silver chain link wristband coming through eBay, and that should be rocking up any time now. The ones that Samsung su supply are decent. I mean, the, the heavy duty, but they just look ugly af, in my opinion. Ugly af. Plus, it's a prick to put on as well. Well, I think I've covered just about everything, guys. Thank you for watching this review. I hope it helped you uh, in deciding whether or not you want to get this watch or another watch. Um, if it did help, hit that like button and even the subscribe button. The old sub count is climbing up slowly but surely and that makes me feel awesome because I know that I'm helping you guys out. Um, if you do have any questions, throw it in the comments below. I'll try and answer it to the best of my ability. And uh, yeah, shit, I think that's about it. Um, yeah, I'll see you in the comment section below. Have a great life. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.